I'm Kathy Johnson, and welcome to Town Talk. I have with me today uh, Dominic Cotton, who's a brain injury advocate, and we're going to talk about some bills that are coming forward up in Hartford uh, concerning brain injury and the future of uh, what can be done uh, to help our programs and help brain injury survivors. Welcome, Dominic. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Would you like to tell us a little bit about uh, the bills that are uh, on their way uh, through the system? Well, um, there are two bills currently. Uh, there's uh, House Bill uh, 6155, and uh, that has to do with uh, notifying people, um, not just on uh, the brain injury waiver, but all waivers. I believe there's some, I think, 23,000 people that are currently on waivers through Department of Developmental Services, Department of Mental Health Addiction Services, and Department of Social Services who, who are on waivers. Um, and the bill, um, which is hopefully being voted on to draft as we speak, oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> um, was uh, proposed um, uh, by myself after um, everything that we went through last year in, in dealing with the ABI waiver, too, and the fact that um, we, there was never any notification sent out to all persons on our program uh, that they were about to do these massive changes. Mm -hmm. um, the only way that this was uh, broadcast was, um, uh, first of all, to um, tell um, uh, the providers who were, who were on a provider's council at the Brain Injury Alliance mm -hmm. um, who were told to go sell this uh, changes to, uh, to families mm -hmm. that they serve. Um, and uh, obviously this was kind of uh, uh, the beginning of a, a, a big movement um, which uh, brought all of us together. That's right. That's how we met, Dominic. Yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, we, we banded together in, or, in order to fight this because uh, the changes that they were proposing were um, uh, basically elimination of uh, the services that we all depend on, which were independent living skills, training, cognitive behavioral uh, services um, for uh, a, a change to uh, a recovery assistant, which is more of a maintenance model. Uh, right. And um, uh, putting social workers in between uh, doctors and, and, and family members um, instead of uh, the direct access that you have to the doctors um, that you guys have enjoyed for a long period of time. Well, that's right. I got attached to the uh, neurobehavioralist that uh, helped me with my son's brain injury. Uh, for, uh, uh, for the last several years I've had him, He's, he was the best. And to think that I was going to lose that direct contact and my son was going to lose that direct contact with him was a very scary thing because when my son needed a person to talk to other than his mother and father, he had um, the neurobehavioralist uh, uh, that was taking care of him, PhD. And I, I, I was really happy with that. I didn't want to go through a social worker. A social worker has no idea what my son was going through and what we were going through. So I understand that. And we certainly were blindsided. And that, that was our number one issue, was that number one, a, we were blindsided, and B, still to this day, they never notified everybody on this program that there were these massive changes coming through. That's right. That's right. And, and this is where, this is where I, I, I say to you um, as uh, a mother and, and an advocate as you are, but not on the same level, I go and voice my opinion, that um, I, I really am... Uh, losing faith in the system and I am feeling that DSS and our legislators uh, have are are duping me that's how I feel as a parent I can't help it I, I they've lost their credibility with me and any little trust I had from the beginning I mean I'm sorry to say that to you Dominic but that's it's all right <laughs> that those are my feelings <laughs> but anyway proceed <laughs> well I mean uh, essentially what we're looking for is is a, an accommodation, sort of like on, under the Americans with Disabilities Act, um, which um, allows for reasonable technologies or, or, or in order to be able, for somebody to be able to 
function at their job. Mm -hmm. The way that we carry this through is uh, American Disabilities Act um, would, would apply because it's giving people the opportunity to uh, be involved in a public process. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that these, these work, um, previous to this, they, they, they posted these things up in the Connecticut Law Journal, mm -hmm. which I actually sat down with the, with the clerk of uh, Human Services when we were trying to find this when they made their last set of changes to the ABI waiver, too. And um, she couldn't find it in the Connecticut Law Journal. She couldn't, she couldn't even tell me how to, to access the Connecticut Law Journal. Um, so obviously, if she can't access it and I can't access it, how was somebody able to go like find these, um, um, you know, notifications? Um, so what we're saying is because people who are on all these waiver programs have some level of uh, a, a disability, right? Whether it's uh, themselves or um, you know their their family members who 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 are looking out for their best interests, um, who are working jobs and doing other things to take care take care of their family members and are so involved um, that they don't really have the opportunity um, to be able to go uh, access the Connecticut Law Journal for one. Right. And now. From uh, from public testimony, um, the commission has said that uh, well, these things are up on the DSS website, and I was like, well, that was news to everybody else because we didn't, none of us knew that. Number one, mm -hmm. and number two, I went to go access it, and it took me, you know, several different things in order to get through to that to that point of being able to find uh, the notice. <laughs> Real nice, <laughs> huh? Yeah, 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 r really. It's just right up there. You can get right to it. Always hidden away. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, I'll tell you this. For me, it isn't bad enough that my husband and I have had to live a life dealing with my son. Uh, 16 years ago, he was injured in a car accident, brain injured. Dealing with everything that had to do with his health, the whole thing, and having to be ever vigilant for him, and then find out that now... You've got another enemy, not the brain injury, but but our but uh, our government and the people that lead it are always out to save a buck off the backs of the person who has the least voice, and 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 they they, I, they it's done with smoke and mirrors, and it, I really believe it's done to slip it past us while we're busy trying to take care of our loved one. In the meantime, somebody's over in a corner saying, well. Mrs. Johnson isn't going to be paying attention because, uh, and she doesn't represent a lot of votes to me, but I've got to show this, the, the taxpayers of Connecticut that I have to save them a buck, and who's the easiest place to save the buck to? The people that have no voice, the least among us. That infuriates me. That infuriates me. And if they don't like my straightforward and honesty and my lack of decorum, as I've told them before, I will show a degree of decorum if you show me a degree of caring, something other than the taxes and the vote. Do something because your heart is in it and you want to do it for these individuals. But please proceed. I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Donna. Hey, it's all right. So, uh, so I, we, I, I, I'm, what we're looking for is we're looking for actual written notice out so that um, everybody has an opportunity, you know, um, that they do e email and written notice to people so that we all have an opportunity to participate in the public process. Right. Um, because, and, 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 doc and I'm not doctor, sorry. <laughs> uh, the DSS commissioner said, uh, oh, that's what we have Brain Injury Alliance for. Uh, they're supposed to be the ones that are supposed to get this information out to the public. Well, the first time that they did this back in August prior to like our big uh, public forum was to a providers council. Mm -hmm. In order to be on that providers council, you had to pay money to be a member of that providers council. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and that was, you know, even though like we voiced that we wanted to come in and we wanted to hear this and have be part of the d discussion, we were told that the only way to be able to come to that meeting was if you were a member of the Providers Council. 
So <laughs> you would have to, you would have to, for, for me, it would have meant that I would have had to spend $250 in order to become a member of the Providers Council. Um, and then, you know, I mean, I don't mean to, actually, I do mean to say it this way. You know what? Everybody has their own agenda as to who they're looking out for right. in, 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 in the disability community. And just because you label yourself as being out for uh, brain injury doesn't mean that you're involved in every segment of the population as much as you are others. So Brain Injury Alliance is supposed to be, you know, and they get their funding from Department of Social Services, part of it. Um, there's supposed to be education, prevention, um, as well as, uh, you know, a direct telephonic service mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to help guide people toward what mm -hmm. services are. Mm -hmm. um, me specifically, I'm concerned with the people that are worst off in the state of Connecticut, and those are the people that are currently served under the brain injury waivers. Those are the ones that need 24-hour-a-day services. Right. right. It's not that I don't care about all the other people. I do, but I know that the people who are, have it the hardest are the ones that are in need of the most help and need the biggest voice to make sure that what they're getting, if it, if it works, it stays in place and people aren't trying to dismantle it or, or uh, give their opinion you know, that things should be changed around. Well, for those who are watching, I, wanna, I want to say something uh, about myself. Don't, I don't want the um, audience to feel, Dominic, that I am completely down on legislators and I don't understand their plight. Simply because I was the former first selectman in Oxford and the deputy treasurer in Oxford and I was chair of the Oxford Democratic Town Committee, so I know the political world and I've had to wear the hat as a politician. But I also know as a politician that you have to stand in front of the public and take the heat. And you, and if you consider it abuse and you're appalled at a lack of decorum and things like that, then you don't belong in that position. Because if it, as the old cliche says, if it's too hot, then get out of the kitchen. That's the kitchen you chose and you have the walls of the Capitol around you and all the protection and all the accolades from your fellow legislators. I don't have to give you my accolades. I only have to worry about my son and only my son. And I really don't consider anybody an advocate unless they've experienced what I've experienced and unless they prove to me otherwise. And if they don't, I've told them this before, I turn into a mother polar bear. I really don't care who likes me, who dislikes me, who I made uncomfortable, and, and who thinks that I'm just not playing nice. That is where I'm coming from because I see down the road that we have hope that this bill will pass, and I think it will. They seem to be in agreement, mm -hmm. and that uh, it's going to go well. We'll see if they keep their promise. And uh, can you just tell us a little more now that I'm off my second belt box? Uh, can you tell us a little more <laughs> about what happens once the, uh, today? What's happening today with the bill for to communicate with everyone? Talk about the second bill and what is the what are the steps after that? Well, I guess. I mean, I, before we I, I get move on to the bill, I, I guess I want to uh, oh, okay. focus on one other, one other thing, which is please do, which is the great part of this country. You know what? It's the First Amendment. Sure. It's 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 speaking out, and you know what? It is your right to speak out uh, for your son. That's right. And you know, you talk about turning turning up the heat in the in the kitchen. Well, you know what? Sometimes you got to put the burner on high in order to get people's attentions right. and let the pot boil over. So that people right. know that you're that, that you're there, that you care about these issues, and um, that you're out there and you're you're voicing them. And you know what? I mean, if it wasn't for us turning up the pot, oh, on did this we whole, that day? Oh my goodness! Issue, and and what we did thereafter about this whole issue, then you know what? People would have just come with a steamroller. And they didn't even have accurate information on their side. They were all neophytes at that table at the first forum. They, they had no idea. They thought this was going to be a cakewalk. They'd go in, present their dog and pony show with their PowerPoints, DSS and them, yep. and, and, and make nice. And everybody get up and have a bleeding heart of how our loved one needed the program. And they'd check off the little box and say, okay, we talked to the public, next step. 
and that didn't happen. Matter of fact, three state policemen were called into the room, remember, to stand mm -hmm. in the corner, which didn't scare me in the least because that's usually done when there's a crowd that's vocal, just, just to be, have a presence, but the state police weren't going to take any of us out of that room. No, and, and, and really, um, you know, I, I met up with the former uh, uh, president of uh, the Senate, uh, Don Williams, and mm -hmm. um, he talked about uh, several different issues that, it, that had come up uh, to, to the legislature, and um, one of them uh, where, where people really coalesced or, or came together. One of them uh, was obviously after Sandy Hook with gun, gun issues. Sure. Um, another one was on G GMO uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, stuff, and then he he actually brought us up because wow we 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 were um, a big force, and you know we used uh, different medias. Uh, we we were involved in Facebook and, and contacting people and getting yeah. them involved and letting them know what our issues were and. You know, he he talked about how that was really a force and 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 what brought us all together, and that's why I said, you know, turning up the pot to like, you know, let it boil over, and uh, I know we shut down the governor's phones a few times. We shut them down. We got in to see uh, uh, the governor's chief of staff. Mm -hmm. We got in to see uh, Nancy Wyman, mm -hmm. uh, who, by the way, Nancy Wyman said that day when we were in her office that she was not about to throw. Uh, pe uh, uh, people with disability under a bus for a dollar, for a buck. Well, I don't know. It doesn't seem, we'll talk about more of where we're going with this, but I think our, our audience will see that it's still not going in that direction totally. Well, I mean, that's why notice to everybody on these programs, that's right. when they make changes to them, is so important because without that notice, without that public voice, um, people don't have input into into services or programs uh, that involve themselves, mm -hmm. um, which is technically what they call a, a person-centered planning. This whole program and all these waivers from the federal government are based on person-centered programming. Right. And that basically says that, you know, the person's satisfaction with these waiver programs is ultimately decided upon them being involved in the process and planning for what their needs and wants are and um, the state or, or other people that are involved in their program being around to support them in order to help them get to that. Well, how can you have person-centered program on the individual level and not have it on um, the, the higher level of, of, of the administration of these programs? Very good question, Dominic. Uh, you, you, and it goes back. It, it goes back to them discovering that a waiver program gets matching federal funds, yeah. and again, it saves money. And when I understand, when you're the governor or when you're a leader, and I had to do a town budget. I mean, right now, Oxford is a forty million dollar corporation. In my day, it was close to thirty, maybe around twenty eight million. And uh, you have to look, and you have to see. Uh, Board of Finance, how we're going to save money uh, and, and hold taxes. But to just take the least among us and, and try to warehouse them and not give them the opportunities that my son had because he was lucky enough to get on the early stages of this program. Mm -hmm. But anyway, please continue. So, I mean, I kind of look at like person-centered person programming is, is kind of, I look at it as the flower, you know. Mm -hmm. The person's in the in the center, and they have like all the, the petal. different petals that kind of go like around it that are there, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the flower together looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. But when the state starts plucking off all the petals that are all the supports that are around people, and leaves you with like a half a flower, it, it, it doesn't look complete. And so what I mean, I think what we're looking for is we're looking for, and this is right across the board, was a voice in the services voice. that are provided and not just some bureaucracy saying, oh, well, you, we can slice and dice over here. We can pull this pedal off over here. You know what? We'll pull a few over here. Nobody will really notice and we'll do this. And you're taken away from, from, from the idea behind the federal government of what they want this program to be. Well, because they don't see the human being bes behind what they're doing. They see it from a different angle. And what ends up is, yes, you have the center of the flower left, and that's satisfactory to people who don't have someone in their families injured. In other words, 
we feel good as a community, we feel good as a people, as Americans, if we've given someone three meals and a bed. Mm -hmm. And as long as they're in a building where no one can see them with mm -hmm. three meals and a bed, they forget about people with names and faces who, and don't understand that a brain injured person can keep healing through the years. But if mm -hmm. you warehouse them like that, and you do what you feel is a nice, humane thing to do, it's very easy. Oh, we can save a few bucks here. Now the budget is balancing. Who's going to look at those people? And how many parents are going to be as vocal as we were? How many people are, are going to wake up one morning and find out that their person's program just isn't there? And, and that's the case of the average voter in this country. Uh, they don't pay attention. And then when all the bills are passed and the damage is done and the horse is out of the barn, they say, oh, my goodness, no one told me. Well, no one wanted to tell you, you fool. <laughs> so. Well, I know uh, much as you, as you stood up in, in, uh, in that first forum that we had, um, I stood up. and, and I You went, did. And I went back and I looked at, at, at certain parts of my testimony. And I had I, I have to laugh at some of this stuff. And I have to, like, you know, feel sad at the other half. One of the first things I said was, you know, the last things I said was, you know, this could happen to anybody up on, up on that panel. Yes, you did. And, you know, one of our legislators who, who, who's, who's very close with, with a friend of ours, um, uh, a senator. I think he might have been in that room. He wasn't in that room that day. Hey, he but was, he, he wasn't. Was, he, was, he, was at the sec, he was at the second forum that we and had. And he was a very nice gentleman to and us, he, too. He, he, was, he was out, and he, he told us what we had to do at the very beginning. He said yes. that we had to really, you know... We were going to have to, you know, go up against the wall and, you know, push this as hard as we possibly can because we were up against, you know, some heavy-duty forces. Yes, he was one of the very few that you, you know has a heart. I can count him on, on my four fingers here, okay? But he was one, yes. But he, he, he unfortunately, over the summer, he, he, he fell down a flight of stairs uh, while moving some furniture, and, you know, he suffered a brain injury, and he's, yes, I he's know. been going through... And you know what? One of the most joyous moments that I've actually seen, because I, I was there for the opening uh, of, this, of the Senate, uh, was when he walked in and all the legislators stood up and clapped for, for like 10 minutes straight um, because they were so happy to see their friend come, coming back and he was going to continue to be a part. I mean, that's how well-liked this, 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 this gentleman was. Well, as I said, he was, uh, he's well-liked because he connects with people. But... My point was that this can happen to anybody. Yes, and, it can. And 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 you can be, you know, on this side of this side of the fence one day, and you can be on the other side the next. You never know, and that's what makes this brain injury and, and, and um, this specifically different than a lot of other things. For pe for people have a hard time ignoring it, is because um, when you have a mental health uh, issue, people say it's either you know genetics. Or it's uh, uh, things that you're that you're going through, or traumas that you're facing in life. That might not happen to me. If you got a developmentally, uh, you know, disabled family members, that was something that happened genetically. Um, when you're talking about brain injury, it is. It's literally the one thing that is common across the whole spectrum. It goes. It, it doesn't have a racial profile. It doesn't have a, a, a male or a female profile. It, it can be anybody. Well, when I faced the anthrax crisis in Oxford and the press came to me, it was three years after my son's injury, and they said to me, Mrs. Johnson, you, 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 your first day in office, how are you holding up under this? And I said, I learned by my son that the quality and tranquility of one's life can change in a nanosecond. Mm -hmm. And that... And this was three months after, a couple of months after Twin Towers. I said, I had my own Twin Towers in my life. It was the day I got a phone call that said, your son is in a car accident. And then to find out he has a brain injury. I want the audience to understand this. I want to touch their hearts a little bit. And then I want to talk about the bill because that's why we're here. Let me tell you what that was like. I was camping with my husband. We were in Rhode Island. There were not cell phones around that readily then. We're getting ready to go home that morning. And the rangers came to us and said, your son is in a car accident. 
the state police are on the phone. Well, we didn't know which son. We have two. When they handed me the phone and they said to me, your son has, uh, was thrown from a vehicle, I said, how could that be? He wears his seat belt. Well, 23 years old, he was riding in the bed of a pickup truck like a fool, okay? Truck had an accident, and he was thrown out. And I said, well, what, well, how is he? He has a brain injury. I have a medical background. When they said that, I felt my body leave the seat and head for the floor. And my husband had to stop me. And so I want people to understand that I have no patience for Mr. Bremby, commissioner. I have no patience for the legislators that try to play tricks. I have no patience for Nancy Wyman, no patience for Governor Malloy, who I stumped for him all over Oxford and got on the hub dialer to get him reelected, only to find, and we'll touch on this, that now we're getting thrown another curveball. We're just about to get a bill passed to even get them to communicate with us. And now we're going to go down and we're going to touch on that. I want the audience to hang in there with me because wait till you hear what's coming. We're going to get duped again. And I'm supposed to be nice? I really don't care. I have nothing to lose. So... I'm going to go back to you, Dominic, and I'm going to ask you if you want to continue with your line of thought or do you want to go to how, what's happening with the bill. I well, thank the uh, audience for listening, but I'm sorry. I, I cannot hide this. Hey, you know what? I, I, I mean, it's a part of what affects us all. And, yes. And, 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 it, and, and it's what uh, brings this community together is because... Um, Everybody's experienced that level of, of, of tragedy together and, and, and of seeing somebody's life uh, with one event uh, be completely changed. And then on the other end of the spectrum, seeing it, you know, uh, almost be, have to be like reborn and, and, and redeveloped and, 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 and brought into a, a future that maybe um, they didn't think uh, might have been possible for some people or it's completely different from, from what they expected out of life in the, in, in the first place of where they wanted to be. And that's, that's what makes it such an emotional uh, uh, thing to deal with is because, um, you know, your, your son had, he was 23. He, he had, I'm sure he probably had his ideas of where he wanted to be in life and what he wanted yeah. to do. Yeah, he wanted and, to be an actor. He was on his way to New York City. He already had done Shakespeare and a few plays, and he was going to try. He, he had a lot of talents. He was like a Renaissance person. He, he was, and but that was his love. That was what he was on his way to do. And on the other, so I mean, in, in some ways, not in some ways, I mean, a lot of ways, that was, that was taken away from him, but... You know, what I look in, within all of this, um, and, it, and it's what gives me hope, and, and, it, and it what's, it's what makes me want to continue to work with people, is, you know what, that exact track that, you're, that your son wanted to be on um, might not be available in the exact same way. But what he did was he took what internally drove him, what motivated him, what made him happy. And he found a way to continue on with that because your son paints. Yes, he does. He writes He's plays. An yes, he does. He, 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 he plays music. He does, Dominic. And this is where I want to say something. I, got, I was very lucky as a mother and, and a parent and, and, uh, and anyone who has a brother or sister. We were very lucky that Robert came through. It took years and years of his brain continually moving forward and us being supportive. But I want to talk about the people out there whose children never made it that far. They're in beds. They have to become their own ILSTs. They have to have their own business. They, they have to look every day at their child in a bed 
and wish that they could only have gotten as far as my son. I think about those people every single day because I faced those gates of hell. I felt the heat in hell. I didn't have to live there. Hell would have been watching my son in a bed, completely out of it, and me having to visit him as just a person there who couldn't do anything. There are people that, yes, are, as you described, are that bad. And, and to those mothers and fathers, I can't even speak of it. I, I, I can't even, I can't even, I have to dry my tears for them because my tears are nothing compared to the tears they're crying. And so those are the people that are so forgotten. I'm very fortunate. I asked God if God could just leave my son a happy person. If he couldn't give him anything, just let me go visit him and know he's happy in his life. And if you could, could you just leave one gift? Well, I was blessed. For whatever reason, I was blessed. But we got to keep fighting. And that's why your bill that you have put forward, you, Dominic, who I might have the emotion as a mother, and I might have the big mouth, and I might not be afraid to get up and, and say my piece, and I might not be afraid to be nice, too, when I have to be. You did your homework, and you gave us the credibility to go forward, and that's what you gave us, Dominic. And for that, I'll never forget when we were with, in front of uh, the commissioner with all his people. We had three things. When you ever sat there, and they were coming at you with figures and numbers and reasons and all, and you sat there, and you had your ducks in a row, this is what I did. <laughs> We're important. We're not just a bunch of loud mouths who are going to go away, just a bunch of mal malcontents. We have teeth. And so tell me what you've sunk your teeth into now in this bill. Well, I mean, with, I mean and, I, and this is what I was getting to, like with person-centered right. plan, yes. person planning. I, with, I mean, with your son specifically, you have a program around what he wants to do. Yes. And that's why it works so well. Right. And... With this, like I said, we don't want the state dismantling those things that work so well for us. That's and right. the only way that we can do that is is by um, having a voice, by by everybody being involved uh, and getting notification that that there are changes coming through, that they can ensure that these programs are are set in the way that works for them, um, and. Where we are, we are at currently, um, this is uh, a new legislative session. Right. In the first year, which is uh, what they call a long year because it, it, it runs uh, January to, uh, to June, um, people are allowed to put uh, concepts or, or ideas for bills forward. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to be a fully written bill. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was, um, this is a big issue for us. Um, over the last couple of years, obviously. Um, so I put together a proposal. Um, I sent it off to probably about um, 10 or 12 different legislators that I know that are on um, that committee who I've had a lot of involvement with um, and, um, you know, asked uh, uh, for, for a sponsor um, because um, if somebody somebody has to sponsor it, though, I can't just write the bill and say, here, here, here you go. Right. There has to be a legislator that, that, right. that actually uh, sponsors the bill. Um, I did have one person that was willing to sponsor it, um, but we were fortunate enough that the two co-chairs of uh, the Human Services Committee, uh, Catherine Abercrombie yes. and, and, and uh, Senator Moore, yes. um, both took, took this bill up. Um, so they wrote... Uh, a preliminary, which is like a, an, an, an overall, like a basic concept of idea of what you know law this relates to, uh, and then they they put that out, and then they they voted to have a public hearing. The public hearing we had um, last Tuesday, and yes. that was and that was where we all went. Yes, got to have have our uh, input from from both sides. It comes from the commissioner's side. Um, I think there were probably about, uh, I think, eight or ten people that actually uh, mm -hmm. testified, um, not just our group, but there were several other people that put in written testimony mm -hmm. um, that were uh, uh, in support of this. Well, you know, uh, uh, Representative Abercrombie and uh, Senator Moore, I appreciate what they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I, I give them accolades for that. Um, I listened to Commissioner Bremby's testimony, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I got the impression he isn't really crazy about the idea. I hope our legislators uh, uh, make sure that he gets a little more excited about this idea. Well, I mean, the next step in the process is what's happening today, which mm -hmm. is they've been through the public hearing process, and so today uh, the Human Services Committee votes to draft the bill. Mm -hmm. And what that means is uh, now that they've heard the public's input, um, they will vote as to whether to proceed and, and draft an actual bill with the language, with all the inner workings of how this is going to be put together. Um, at the end, uh, when, they, when, when if they, they vote to draft it, they draft the bill, and then they'll have another committee vote on whether they find it, you know, favorable, um, and then it goes to the House, the Senate floor. If it, if, if it goes through there, then it goes to the governor's desk. Now, do we have, at what point do we have a, um, at the public hearing, do we have input again? Do we at a public hearing, or is it just going to go down its process now? We've had our moment. We, we had our moment. It's, it's, it's usually one, one, one public hearing, and this was different than the waiver amendments, because on the waiver amendments um, that have come through in the past, uh, the state gets to put forth their version of what they want, and they, they send it off to the legislature, and the legislature gives it, you know, an up or down mm -hmm. vote, or they vote not to, to discuss it, and mm -hmm. at that point it becomes effective after 30 days. Mm -hmm. This was uh, instead of saying that we, we mean, obviously we were, you know, in favor of it, um, um, we actually got to give our, our, our actual input into it uh, about what should be placed in the, in the bill. Mm -hmm. um, if in, in the amendment process, it's um, you vote it up or down, and if they send it, send it back, they, you know, the legislature is telling DSS, no, we don't like the way this is done, you need to rewrite this. Right. Right, and so we are going to stay on top of that then, uh, Dominic, and yep. watch what's happening. Now, all this, and let's, let's take it down to its lowest common denominator, all this work on your part, all this, just to simply ask for communication, a, a form of communication that's done in a timely manner and gets out to everyone. Yep. And that's, you would think that's not asking for much. It might take a little work, and it might take a little thought, and it might disrupt the apple cart up at social services. I know they're shorthanded, but mm -hmm. we're asking for better communication. It's not much. Now, I say as the naysayer here, or let me, ta let me play devil's advocate. So now, what else is going to happen? What will they, how will they mess this thing up? What else will we be fighting for? And I know you want to talk about the other bill, too, but then I want to leave enough time for us in this hour for you to tell the audience what it, I say what else, I already know what else. Wait till our audience hears it. It's going to be shocking. Go ahead. Um, well, the other end of, of, of the spectrum, um, and um, obviously they haven't notified anybody of this. But it's being done behind <laughs> our backs. We caught wind of it. Yes, right. we did. Is that uh, they plan uh, to take the social workers uh, out, out of our, our, our program um, who, um, who are like the, the administrators of, of this program. Right. They oversee it. Uh, right. They write. They write. We them meet with them a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. Yeah. We we they write the programs. Uh, you know, with 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 the whole entire team, they're the ones who have been running this program. Right. For the last fifteen, uh, sixteen years. Right. Um, they want to take their function out and give it to uh, an, an an outside organization, and our concern is. Um, that these people, A, aren't going to be prepared or don't have the background and knowledge to work with people with brain injury, and so they would be there deciding services for people Yes. without um, uh, the background or, or the knowledge that the uh, Department of Social Services has developed over the last 15, 16 years through experience. So all of a sudden you have some new people coming in 
um, who don't have the level of experience uh, to develop these programs. Um, some of them, um, uh, uh, of the other uh, waivers, have already been transferred over to certain people. The, the elder care waiver mm -hmm. uh, was transferred over, uh, the personal care waiver. But they're not, they're dealing with more physical um, issues than they are um, cognitive issues that somebody really needs to understand in order to develop a program like your son's, mm -hmm. which is highly specialized, um, where, which, you know, fits his, his needs. Now all of a sudden you're taking the experience factor that we've had with the direct line DSS workers not the administration way up top. No, just the woman who's known your you know, son. son for my son, yes. For how many years has right. he known him for now? Well, I have a new one, but the one before that, almost half of the time that he's been there in the six, we've only had two, right. and now this is our, our third one. Uh, matter of fact, his first one was uh, the, the supervisor uh, uh, years ago. But uh, that brings me to this question now. My pro the program for me, I'll, I'll, to, I'll make it simple for our audience if they're still interested in the program and tuned in. Uh, here's my son. He's with an agency. Yep. He has an independent living skills teacher. Right. He has a vocational coach. Yep. He has a neurobehavioralist, yep. PhD, who um, oversees his, his capacity and his input is extremely important to the social worker and to uh, the woman who owns the agency and the ILST. His input is very important. Uh, and um, now, this is a team. Yep. This team makes this program. We meet four times or f every so many months, at least four times a year to rewrite it based on what the neuropsychologist says, based on what the mommy and daddy say, based on what uh, uh, his ILST has to say, who is very skilled, and, and all, all these people are involved. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to that circle? Who, who is going, who's going to, I feel like I'm going to be losing my behavioralist, my ILST. I, 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 it's bad enough now that um, uh, a situation's changed where uh, uh, my ILST was making so little money, I had to have him go private. Mm -hmm. And Allied is the fiduciary, and that's another can of worms we won't go into now. But what do you see in the future? I feel like we're going to have a shaky ground here. It's the beginning of the end again. We're going to be fighting. Well, it's, it's and, and um, this is the major issue, is when, if they, if they hand this off to another outside agency, how much... What level of accountability does Kathy Johnson have for the services that are being provided? Right now, if you have like a major problem with, with the program, you can kind of go up the chain. Sure. And, and I have say, backing. Uh, uh, right. Now you have another like, you know, level that you have to go in. So now if they have an outside agency outside of DSS, you're going to have to go through the different levels of that agency who then ultimately reports to, to, to DSS. It's like they're putting another layer in between all this stuff. More bureaucracy. Right. And so what happens, because this program is supposed to be dynamic. If your son's needs change, they're supposed to be able to write programs in order to be able yes. to have them change along with it. You recently went through, through a change. You, your, your ILST um, went, went uh, uh, private, and um, things were changed around in the program. Because four, he right. couldn't live on $14 an hour. I for don't the, disagree with you. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and to go private, he was able to make $32. Well, he thought 36 and then mm -hmm. they found a way to take 3 bucks away. Yeah. And, 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 and in their infinite wisdom, DSS blames Allied, Allied blames DSS, but in their infinite wisdom, my son is actually the employer. Yeah. And he's the brain injured person. Go Now, I'll let the audience figure that one out. Oh, yeah. But anyway, what I'm afraid of now is two years from now, the very program that has brought my son uh, with a talent of being a fine artist. He's shown in New York City and all. He's, we've been very fortunate, but he's had a program that has worked with him and yes. brought out 
his natural God-given talents like every parent wants for their child, healthy or not healthy. They want them to be the best with what God, the gray matter mm -hmm. God gave them, the talents God gave them or nature gave them, if you will, whatever you believe in. And, and uh, all I want for my son is what Governor Malloy's mother wanted for him. Mm -hmm. If the University of Boston didn't rise to the occasion, you know he's dyslex dyslexic, if the, he said it in his stump speech, if they didn't give him the tools he needed to become an attorney, he wouldn't be where he is today. Well, why can't I have that for my boy? Because somebody along the line wants to give a favor to a friend in government because that's what's getting the votes, and my son doesn't count because he lives in a, a stinking little town with a mother who's not high in politics. That's what he gets. And, and by the way, the people waiting to get on that program, my son was in the right place at the right time. He got the program as it was supposed to be 15 years ago. He, he got Philly Mignon. Somebody else's son is going to get skipped over and get oatmeal. That's not right. It's not right. It's not human, and it's not moral. Take it from here. <laughs> well, I think you bring up a good point with Governor Malloy. He got a reasonable accommodation in all of his education yes. in, order to, in order to be able to get, to get through. And, and that's what we're asking for. We're asking for a reasonable accommodation so that right. we get notice on these things, so that well, we have input into these things. That's right. So that if, if we see something like we're about to see right now, instead of, you know, 10 of us or, or, or 20 of us, like, getting together, that everybody gets the notification instead, of, af asking. instead of after the fact, because they send out this notification anyways. Because well, you got to, after, after the public hearings back in October, over like these changes to, to our program about making your son an employer, probably within a couple of days, you got a notice from Ally telling you that this was going to happen. Yeah, well, uh, yeah after, after the fact. After the fact. fact. Yes, Ex exactly. After the fact. Exactly. And, and, and then they changed the way they made the payroll. That's another story. But even as we speak right now, and even as I'm putting our legislators and our governor's foot to the fire, okay, even as we're doing this, right around the corner, we no sooner think we, they're giving us a little crumb on the table, which could qu get complicated back and forth, even mm -hmm. for the communication. Something else is, is starting. Another storm is festering in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, and it's coming our way. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this. How can I trust them? I don't trust them. I don't trust them one little bit. I have to view it. I admire you. You're up there. You, I, I, I understand how, how politicians think. I remember when I was against the power plant and still am in Oxford. Mm -hmm. And they were putting a lot of pressure on me to make that power plant not happen. And I couldn't at that point. And I said to some of the people really arguing with me, and, and people who didn't like that I wanted a high school, I said, I'll go up to my eyeballs in water for you, but you have to throw me a snorkel. Well, how many snorkels can I throw Governor Malloy? How many chances can I give him to do something nice for people who don't count that much to him? How many times do I... Will, will it ruin his whole life? It, is there... Is there some great eternal plan that says that I can't have what I want for my son? Well, I mean, I think back to, to, to a different moment. Um, and Go you, ahead. You, you and I went to uh, the town hall meetings oh, uh, yes. that, that, Malo that Malloy had uh, down in Norwalk. Pathetic. And, and, and down in Milford. And I brought this whole issue up to him. And he was kind of like, he started talking about different uh, waivers. I'm like, no, no, that's not our program. And, you know, no, no, that's, ours is this one over here. And, um, you know, I think somewhere in the background you, you have an, an administration and you have, to, you have to have somebody at the top that's, that's, a, that's accountable for everything that happens in the administration. But there's people that are at the lower levels which do the planning for the administration and say, oh, this is a good idea, and they, you know. And they, I and they, know. And they roll it out in front of you. And 
those are the ones that are really the people that have had a master plan for all of this stuff. Because again, I refer back to, to, to uh, you know our original meeting back in September at, at that forum, and I said to him, "What are you trying to do? You're trying to prepackage this program so it's easier for somebody else to administer, so that you can ship it out of the Department of Social Services." Well, here I am, a year and a half later, and what's happening? Just what you said. Exactly. And, and, and here's where I'll pick up. I, I got the high sign. If the audience saw me look to my side, I haven't learned how to do that without being obvious. We have about eight more minutes. But no. in those eight minutes, what I want to say is yes. And when we got in to see Governor Malloy's chief of staff that day, I was with Elaine Burns. I yep. was with Robert's um, neuro uh, uh, behavioral behavioralist was there that day. I don't want to say his name because I'm sure the, poor, the man wants to hang on to the job he has and he's already been fighting his heart out. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I said to the governor's chief of staff, I, and, and this was after the town meetings and all this, I said, Haven't, hasn't anyone filled the governor in on this? I said, or did we just, did you people just feel that, oh, just another bunch of small-time people that are all emotional, have no facts, uh, we'll pat them on the head, we'll tell them, all right, Sonny, mm -hmm. go away, you bother me, and we won't bother the governor with it. And he said, no, we didn't say much to the governor. And I said, you know what? If you were my chief of staff or my administrative assistant when I was in Oxford and I didn't hear about this, I said, I would have fired you. I, he, he said, well, I don't play politics. And I nearly laughed in his face. I said, well, you should play politics. I said, because the governor's up for re-election, and you've got a lot of angry people just before an election. And still I stumped for that man. So I know all this baloney. I, I, I'm being as candid as I'm going to be. I can't worry about it anymore. I've been on both sides of the fence. And so... Um, you know, you're right about telling the history. I think the public should know what we had to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it took a letter where uh, it took two letters to his his uh, uh, organizer. You know, uh, his, his, the the secretary that uh, um, uh, I can't think of his per the name you call him, but the person who who schedules his scheduler, the governor's mm -hmm. schedule. It took two letters, and finally, in one letter. I had to actually say, I sat next to the governor. I was close enough to touch his shoulder. He's been to Oxford. I've heard his stump speech three times, and I can't get in to see him even once. I don't count for anything. I said, I'd have a better chance at an Elvis sighting. Well, the next day, I finally got a note. You can see the chief of staff, and that's when we went to see the chief of Well, at least I got that far. But um, to wrap this up, here's where we are now. And this is my frustration. I'm sure I'm mm -hmm. not showing very much frustration to my, my audience that's watching. I'm trying to stay as calm as possible, as Kathy Johnson can stay. But where do we go from here, Dominic? We're still in the middle. We haven't even begun the battle of even getting a communication, a communication. And already we've got, like I said, a little hurricane starting over the next project. Where do you well, see I, we do from here? I think the, the, the bigger part of this is... Um, to get the information out to the public because obviously, you know, the SS, they have their own ideas about where they want to go, you know, policy-wise, and, and um, obviously they want to change the way that we're going with this. And I don't even think our legislators even know that these are the things that are coming down the pipe. Again, some of them, you know, they don't find out about these things right until the moment that they actually happen, and they don't learn what effect they have. And I think that's um, why it seems like over the years a lot of, of things get rubber stamped. And sure they do. It's, it's an easy way out. They do right. it in Washington the same way. And so, you know, um, obviously the best step is, you know, we have public notification. People can notify their, their, their legislatures. And, you know, we're going to come down to a situation where we're going to have to ask them to vote something down and to kick it back at DSS and say, you know, no, we don't want to do this. Well, now we're going to separate the men from the boys that sit up there and are supposed mm -hmm. to legislate. It was never supposed to be easy, folks. Yep. You know? And I know that I, I don't represent a vote to any of those people, but, you know, I'm going to give, I'm going to do what God, the talent God gave me. I've got a mouth, and I, I can stand up on my feet, and I can think on my feet, and I know how to be a politician right back at them. 
and I will do that, Dominic. And what I'm proud about you is people like me are a dime a dozen. There's a lot of us out there that can speak like I can speak and, and, and touch people's hearts if I have to, get people angry with me if I have to, be nice when I have to. But you are a very important cog. In, you are the cog in the wheel. You go down and you do what all the people around the legislators do for them. You do all the homework. You pull it apart. You explain it so people can understand it. You explain it to me. And then you are able to make inroads with the legislators, explain it in a way they can understand it, because lots of them think that they can walk away. I've got to wind it up. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic, I'll give you the last yeah. word. Go right ahead. Uh, I just wanted to, you know what? Uh, if there's not somebody, like I said, turn, turning up the heat, then there's no way that I can walk in there and, and, and try to show people, you know, how to turn it back down again or find a way to, to get through things. So, you know what? We're a community. We all work together. We're and working that's the together. most important thing. Thank you, Dominic. I think that I have my place. You have your place. Yep. Father Russ Carmichael has his. Elaine Burns. We're all looking for yep. the same thing. We're all looking for the same thing. We do it in a different way. Yep. I am going to be the activist. I can't help it. And I thank you very, very much for doing this show You're with welcome. me. Anytime. And I hope that I'm going to advertise it on Facebook, and I'm hoping everybody sees it. And I know you're going to put it on YouTube yep. for me. Yep. Thank you, Dominic. You're welcome, dear. Take thank care. you. Goodbye.